Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Rocks It's True and in this episode we're going to take a look at standardized unit systems, the SI units, why they're a thing and what's important about them. So let's get cracking, shall we? Let's imagine that you are really good at making something, okay? So uh, you've got a thing that you're really good at making back in the day. Okay, now let's go back to the days before uh, monetary value and we're going to go and barter some of this. So I'm really good at making what appears to be orange blocks. Now it turns out that over here there's a guy uh, who really, really, really likes orange blocks and spends his entire day thinking about orange blocks. And as a result, would like to buy some orange blocks from you. Yet we haven't invented money yet. This person is actually really good at making little blue blocks. And you're quite a large fan of large blue blocks, or at least having a large quantity of blue blocks. So the simple solution is for you to do a trade. And this is what we're going to try and do. So you and your buddy meet, and you, he asks you for blue, for orange blocks, you ask him for blue blocks. Um, and you come up with a concept. Now you've developed numbers, you just haven't got any form of unit system. Um, so what you're going to do is he's going to ask for one, and you're going to ask for one as well, because that seems like party. And the result is that you get one tiny blue block, and he gets one giant orange blue block. And you seem remarkably downcast about this, yet he seems remarkably upbeat about this process, and yet you've both received one. And the problem is, of course, that the blue block is much smaller than the orange block, and we're going to assume that they take the same effort to make. All right, so why did this happen? This happened because you simply used a number um, rather than establishing a size or a volume. So what you would then do is you could have said, I will have one block. That could have been a unit. Okay, so I'll give you one block, you give me one block. But then that still leads us with the problem that, yes, you've been given a block and he's been given a block, yet you're still unhappy about it. And the reason is that you haven't standardized what your vision of a block is. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go and ask an arbitrator. Let's find ourselves a local wise person to be the arbitrator. And you come with your complaint saying that you're unhappy because you've got a blue block. He's delightedly happy because he's got an orange block, doesn't know why he's here. Um, can you explain this to us? The arbitrator explains the process that he feels hard done by, by having a smaller block than you. Um, and that from here on in, we're going to have um, a standardized version of a block. And the wise man produces the unit of the block. Okay, And from here on in, all blocks are measured in terms of this. So what we've got here is one, two, we've got about two and a half blocks for this. So we would need them to make this in parity. We would need to have about two and a half blocks of this. So let's get that done. And now it all seems right with the world because we have a standardized unit of the block. And as long as we're referring to the wise man's unit of the block, everything's all right. Uh, we will need to renegotiate the size of a block if we ever meet another try that uses different block analysis and so forth. But eventually we should spread our concept of the block all the way around the world and we should never have any problems trading blue, orange or green blocks anywhere in the future, provided that the blocks remain of sufficient uh, or equal uh, difficulty in terms of making. And that's the basis of a unit. We've developed the block as a unit. Okay, and uh, units are simply, simply like that. If I ask you, you know, to walk four, well, walking four is impossible and highly possible at the same time. I can take four steps, I can walk four miles, I could, um, I could attempt to walk four light years. And these are rather different measurements. So what we have to do is we have to qualify it with four of something. It's actually a multiplication. But when I'm asking you to walk four meters, I want you to walk four sets of one meter. All right. If I want um, 30 meters or 30 milliliters of something, I want 30 sets of one milliliter. Yeah, and because of algebra, we don't really do multiply by ones, so we change that from four times one meter to four meter. And we shorten it to 4m, and we, we shorten that from 30 times 1ml to just 30ml, just as algebra is a thing. Right, these are what the units are. And we can make up piles of them. There's units all over the place. There's meters cubed um, for volume. Uh, there's yards for 
Americans. Uh, there, there's, there's units for all sorts of things. There's hogsheads for volumes of water. There's all sorts of units. Okay, but there are a set number of very special units. And there are seven very, very, very special units. And they are the kilogram, the meter, the second, the ampere, the kelvin, the mole, and the candela. These are extremely special units because these are called base units. They describe certain quantities that are special. They describe mass, length or distance, time, current, temperature, amount of substance, that's number of particles, and light intensity. Now, these are different than the other units that we come across. You'll notice the volume's not here in, in this, okay, um, weirdly. Voltage isn't here. Energy is not here. These are fundamentally uh, really important things. But energy uh, can be made from these units because if we take an equation for energy, uh, any energy equation, let's try work done. No, maybe not work done. Uh, let's try, let's try the, the basics. E equals mc squared. Right. Okay, the, the biggie. Well, m is a measurement of mass. C is a measurement of speed. Well, wait a second. We don't have speed in our list. But of course, speed is a measurement that it combines distance and time. So we have distance, time, and mass. And mass, time, and distance are all on this table. Okay, and it turns out that for basically every equation that we have in physics, we can break them down to the point that everything is made up of these seven ideas. However, when you say, what is mass? You have a problem. Okay, if I ask you, what is speed? Speed is the number of meters that you cover in a second. Okay, you can define it in terms of other things. But then when I ask you, what is a second? You have a problem. There's no reason that a second should be a second. There's no reason that that tick on the clock moves forward one tick in the time interval it does. You could have made that tick twice as long and made a second a completely different amount of time. You could have made it so there were 100 seconds in a minute, 100 minutes in an hour, and 100 hours in a day if you just change the length of tick for that tick to happen. All right? And therefore, these are called base units. That you base all of your stuff on these. And these were simply decided upon. Like why is a kilogram a kilogram? A kilogram is a kilogram because somebody lifted a certain amount of stuff and went, that's a kilogram. A meter is a meter because we had a stick and said, that's a meter and everybody's going to measure a meter to be this. Okay? You know, why is a Kelvin a Kelvin? The reason a Kelvin is a Kelvin is because somebody boiled water from freezing to boiling and then arbitrarily divided the scale up into 100 intervals. You could have divided that into 200 intervals, 300, 9,642. It would have been fine. All the physics would still have worked. Just your numbers would all be different. But your unit would be, would be set in such a way that it wouldn't make any difference. Okay, these are the things that you just decided on. The, the amount of substance. Okay, a mole, the number of particles present in 12 grams of carbon-12. Why? Like why? Why would you do that? You know, why, why not pick something completely different? The, you know, the amount, a mole could have been the number of particles um, that were present in 22.4 tons of uranium-235. Okay, it would have been very difficult to establish that, but it could have been done. And there, nothing would have changed except for the numbers in your equations. Okay, math would have still worked out exactly the same way. You still get the same answers and stuff. Just you'd appreciate it differently. And that's what we mean by base units. Okay, these seven units are the basis for which we do all of our stuff. But more importantly, they are entirely arbitrary. They are made up by us. Okay, we invented the Kelvin. We invented the ampere. We just decided to count. Like a, a, an amp is a coulomb per second, but you know, coulomb is a completely arbitrary amount of stuff. And the second is a really arbitrary amount of time. So the ampere is just arbitrary. 
could have been completely different. All right. Labor that enough though, these are called the base units. Okay, they are called the SI base units. They are the system international because French. Um, they're the international system of units. If you're ever asked to express something in terms of base units, you should be using these symbols. I'm going to keep that going. Okay, so we have other units though. We have other units. I'm going to bring that little table with me though, because it's going to be useful as time goes on. We have other things. We have things like energy, and it's measured in joules. We have power, measured in watts. We have um, voltage, measured in joules. Not joules. We have voltage, measured in volts, strangely enough. We have all these other units that are acceptable and we use all the time. Now, this is where the confusion comes in in exams because these are called SI units. These are the accepted standard international versions of units that are used for measuring these things. We accept that energy is measured in joules, watts, or volts. These are SI units. But they are not SI base units. Okay, These are SI base units. Okay, and we're going to show you how these are different. Okay, so if I take energy for example, and any equation for energy will do nicely. Um, so let's pick uh, energy, potential energy, E subscript P is equal to MGH. Okay, that's an equation for energy where we have mass, uh, acceleration due to gravity, and height of the object. Ten delta H, but we'll leave it out that. Okay, so we know that EP is measured in joules, so that's J. We know that mass is measured in kilograms, that's fine. So we can pop a kg in there. Uh, we know that g is measured in meters per second squared because it's an acceleration due to gravity, ms to the minus 2. And we know that height is measured in meters. Okay, now we will see here that kilograms is on our list. Meters is on our list, seconds is on our list, though seconds minus two is just divided by, that's fine. Uh, and meters is on our list. So what we can write is we put this all together, if we just do the if we just do the units, okay, put a one in front of these, we could say that a joule is equal to a kilogram meters per second squared meter. And doing a little bit of jiggery pokery with um, with algebra, kg sits by itself, it's a single unit. Be careful with that. M and M is M squared, and seconds to the minus 2. And a joule is therefore a kilogram meter squared second to the minus 2. So if I was to express a joule as an SI base unit, I would write it as this. And you can sort of see why we just use joules, because this is a pm. And it also hides the fact that we're talking about energy. The kgm squared s to the minus 2 doesn't exactly scream energy at you. It might if you were practice with it, but at the minute it doesn't. Whereas when I say joules, you say energy. Joules, energy. Joules, energy. I hope you're playing along at home. Power, on the other hand, is measured in watts. But we can express it in terms of SI base units as well. We just need a power equation. But power is uh, work done divided by time. We know that. And we know that work done is measured in joules. So we know that power is measured in watts, we've got a W there. We know that work done is measured in joules, and we know that time is measured in seconds. So it is fair to say that the watt is equal to a joule second to the minus one. And that's fine, but not expressing it in terms of the base units, because we will see that seconds is on our base units list, but joules is not. We would need to express joules as its SI um, base unit equivalent to get watts as their base unit. Now, it just so happens we've just figured out joules, so let's work out what that would be. So that will give you W equals for joules. We'll put it in brackets just to keep it severed. Kgm squared s to the minus 2 multiplied by s to the minus 1. And that will give me that a watt is equal to kgm squared s to the minus 3. I hope we're okay with um, multiplying indices. When we multiply indices, we simply add the indices together. So that's minus 2 plus minus 1 gives me minus 3. 
And when we take uh, when we divide by indices, we we simply take away the index. So if I was to do that as divided by seconds to the minus one, that would become seconds to the minus one. Okay, so that's the what sort of out. Okay, now volts is a little bit more fun because we have this little issue that most of our equations for voltage uh, don't come out terribly nicely. The equation that we want to use for working out voltage is actually the power equation P equals IV. V equals IR is your immediate reach, especially coming from GCSE, uh, that V is equal to I times R. The problem with I um, using IR is I is fine. We've got we've got amps in the we've got current in the table here. We've got amps. That's no problem at all. We put I in there. We don't know what the base unit for R is, and to get the base unit for R, we would need to know what the base unit for V is in the first place. So this is actually our most useful equation here, the P equals IV, because what it does is it relates mechanical power, which is this, into our um, into our electrical power. So P equals IV is handy. That means that V is equal to P over I. So V equals, well, power is measured in watts and current is measured in amps, so it'll be watts over amps. We don't write, we don't write to write it with a divided by, so we'll write that as watt amps to the minus one. Because we want our unit to sit across one line. But we can't write a watt because it's not in our table, it's not a base unit, it's, a, it's what's called a derived unit. So we replace it with, ah, we just figured that out, kg m squared s to the minus 3 and then a to the minus 1. And this is the base unit for the volt. And you can definitely see now why we don't use it. That is atrocious. Now since we were on the topic, we have v equals ir, we'll just We'll just kill this dead horse um, again. We can use V equals IR to find what the base unit for R is because we now have the base unit for V. So it would be fair to say that R is equal to V over I. So R is going to be whatever my base unit for V is, which is kg m squared s to the minus 3 a to the minus 1 divided by um, a, which is again multiplied by a to the minus 1 again. And that gives me that r equals kg m squared s to the minus 3 a to the negative 2. And you will never ever again complain about having to write the omega symbol for ohms. So this is how we set up and derive SI units from stuff. Okay, so the SI units are joules, watts, volts, um, and in this case, ohms, but they all have underlying units that make them something else. All right, so if you want to pause the video here, um, it'd be a good idea for you to go and say, well, what about, what about the unit for force? The force, we know that the SI unit for force is the Newton, but can you work out what its SI base units are Using the equation F equals MA, or any F, uh, if you particularly, particularly fancy, you can use work done equals force times distance if you particularly fancy. Have a crack at that. We'll come back later and see if you got that right. Okay, so moving on. What, uh, um, what do we want to do next? Now, what do we want to do next is we want to use this idea to see if an equation actually functions. Now, this is a really useful little tool. Let's say, for example, I wanted to suggest that the energy arriving um, at a point was equal to the luminous intensity uh, multiplied by the uh, multiplied by the power uh, divided by all divided by the area. Okay, so I've got some form of system that's absorbing energy, and I think they might be related in some respect to this equation. All right, so I might want to go and investigate that. I might go and buy myself some form of luminous intensity detector, you know, um, a whole setup that measures power, and measure out the area of light that's being hit, and I would uh, see if that's equal to the energy. But I don't need to bother, actually. I don't need to bother, because I can use this 
to see if it's even remotely possible that that's true. Okay, it doesn't say to say I could check if it's uh, if it is true. I could say I could use it to see if it's possible that it's true. So the energy arriving at a particular point would have to be measured in joules. And that would have to equal the luminous intensity, which we measured in candela, multiplied by the power, which we measured in watts, divided by the area, which would be measured in meters squared. Okay. Now, for this to actually function, then what I would have to have is that the base unit of joules would have to equal the base unit of this side of my equation. All right. So let's have a look and see if that is actually true. We have the unit for joule. Let's go and grab that. There it is there. So we'll just plop that in here. That's the joule. And that's going to have to equal a candela multiplied by the unit for power, which was the unit for uh, for energy just with an, with an extra divided by time on it. And we're going to divide that by meters squared. Now, if you've got half a mathematical brain right now, you're going, no, just straight up no. But let, let's finish it up. Uh, that meter squared is going to cancel with that meter squared uh, on the top and bottom lines. And that's going to give me the following statement. that For this to be true, the kg m squared s to the minus 2 is going to have to equal candela kilograms seconds to the minus 3 for this to be true. And this isn't true. This is mathematically just not true. Okay, so that is not equal to that. So therefore, this is wrong. I don't need to do this experiment. This is wrong. Straight up, this can't be right because the units are not the same. And that's a really useful way of checking. Now, if they had been the same, if they had turned out to be correct, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, you're right. It means that it's not impossible. Okay, so to be clear, this is a way of proving an equation to be wrong. It's a falsifiable. It's not a confirmation system. Okay? So, for example, I could have that the speed of an object is equal to the length of my hair divided by the time I have been awake. All right? Now, we know that speed is measured in meters per second. We could measure the length of my hair in meters. And we could measure the time that I've been awake in seconds, which would actually suggest that this is possible. Okay, this is at least mathematically possible, but when we go and investigate it, it's just wrong. Okay, so this is not a confirmation system, but in this case, it shows that it's not possible and not worth investigating. Okay, right. So once we're armed with that, we can then decide whether or not systems are worth investigating or not. And there's another way that this can be used, and this is, um, this is a common exam trick. Take a look at this equation. All right, so let's imagine that we have some form of energy emitting wave thingy. All right? And somebody comes up with the equation saying that the energy of the incoming wave is going to be the energy of the transmitter plus the speed of light uh, divided by the time of travel. All right, so let's take a look through the units that are available here. That we have the energy of an incoming wave is, of course, going to be equal to a joule, uh, is equal to the energy of the transmitter, which is going to be also a joule, plus the speed of light um, divided by the time of travel. So that's going to be a speed divided by a time. Okay, so that's we'll, we'll figure that out in a minute. Okay, so let's go and grab our unit for the joule again because it keeps coming up. And let's do the analysis here. So that's okay. And that's okay, so this is promising. Um, and then plus, right, speed over time. That's going to be meters per second, ms to the minus one, oopsie doo, ms to the minus one, divided by, divided by s, which is going to be another s to the minus one, if we're doing it as a multiplication, which we want to do. So that gives us our, our next line. Just gather everything together, and that becomes ms to the minus two. Okay, so here we have an agreement between this and this, but not an agreement with this. And this is adding apples and pears. Okay, what we're saying here is that let's put some numbers. We're saying that 10 apples is equal to 8 apples plus 2 pears. That is not true. That is not true even a little bit. It might sound true in terms of numbers. 8 equals 10 plus 2, certainly. 
10 joules does not equal 8 joules plus 2 meters per second squared. That is not true, and therefore this equation is false. This cannot be allowed to happen. Equally, I can't do things like this. I can't have that the energy of an incoming wave equals the energy of the transmitter plus 10, because I would have the energy of the incoming wave in joules equals the energy of the transmitter also in joules plus no unit. And because there's no unit, you can't add apples and pears. Okay, you have apples, apples, nothing, but you're still sticking a number on it. Okay, in order for an equation to be functional, the units of every single term must be the same. And for those of you who are new to the concept, a term is any um, is anything separated by a plus, a minus, or an equal sign. There's more technical definitions now. That'll do for getting us going. So therefore, there are three terms here. There's the energy of the incoming wave, separate but to the energy of the transmitter, separate to the 10 here. These are three separate terms that have three separate units. And if those units don't all agree, this equation cannot be correct. All right. This is called homogeneity of an equation um, and is a very, very important factor in measuring whether or not something is correct or not. All right, so that's an introduction to SI base units and homogeneity of the equation. I hope this has been a useful, quick tutorial for you. Um, I'll see you in the next one. And uh, don't forget, physics rocks. It's true.